What's up and welcome to Decision 2016. Thank you for dropping in. This is uh, Sonic Roadkill. Decision 2016. Uh, this is the final election special uh, on this channel. Probably not the final election. Uh, we will find out. I'm gonna play the final election at Crumbling Empire by Nux Vomica. And we are going to talk a little bit. So the last election special I did just a little bit ago, which was the reboot of the entire series. Excuse my big head in the foreground. I don't think this is the right song. Oh, wait. I think I did okay. Um, this is Portland's Nux Vomica. Um, is our uh, election special. So the last ele election special focused a little bit on the national election. Um, this one I am going to focus on the local election. Our top story, vote. Vote. If you haven't voted already, what are you waiting for? It's time to get out there and vote. Um, if you're like me and you do a lot of talking about it and talking to people and encouraging people to vote, but you're still procrastinating on actually putting the ballot in the mailbox, um, go ahead and do that. There are three counties in Washington where... Uh, so let me get my... Uh, where you will need to add additional postage. Drop boxes around the Washington area, so please, please, please vote. I think we made clear who we're voting for here. Um, on the big screen right now, we are playing Tanner 88. This was supposed to be a, it originally started as an AM edition, hours and hours ago, um, then it was going to be a midday edition, then turned into an uh, I guess evening edition, it's not quite after dark yet, but it's getting there now, um, never really got sunny today, today is November, something's probably no. <laughs> Today is Saturday, November 5th, and this is our Decision 2016 edition on uh, Rebel Kong's channel, Paxel Vision of 89. Uh, if you did not get this in the mail, we'll be going through this a little bit. Um, perhaps like me, you got a lot of these, uh, really Dan she uh, quite a few from you. You got things like this in the mail that look official, that are sponsored by people. Uh, maybe you got things like this. Uh, and I'm not endorsing any of these things, I'm just sort of sharing them. Um, uh, more than two. Uh, I'm just sharing all, how many things you might get in the mail. Um, this candidate, I am going to talk about at some point, um, and other initiatives, and
So I think how I'm going to do this is... YouTube definitely taught me a lesson with the last episode that took literally days to upload. So there probably is going to be an unedited version of this. Um, and then I'm going to break it down into some shorter clips because I really do want to get this out. Like I said, we are literally days away from the election Tuesday, November 8th. Um, in some places, early polling has actually closed. In many places, many people have already voted. This is a little bit late for a um, election special. I, like I said, I'm not going to focus too much on the national election, but I think a lot of us are ready for that to be over. Um, I think that's just sort of, I feel, and I can only speak for maybe my own mood and the mood around where I've been, it feels like there's almost a calm, I hope it's not the calm before the storm, but the calm um, after like fervent, you know, leading into October and through October just like uh, just intense election coverage. I, maybe we just all got numb to it. Maybe we're in shock. Maybe it's Stockholm Syndrome. I don't know. Um, but, you know, it doesn't feel, it feels like it's just we're all, we've taken all that we can take and people are no longer freaking out like they were a little bit ago, but it's not quite over yet. So like I said, if you haven't voted, your vote does count. Please, please, please. Please vote. was Nakbamaka with the final election in a crumbling empire. Um, this is childbirth off of women's rights, and am I? I think I'm actually. <laughs> oh goodness, I yeah. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna play both. I'm gonna play women's rights and then nasty girls, uh, which just feels right. Uh, I guess I will announce a new show on this channel called Locals Only. Um, <laughs> This is not it. Um, I did think about doing all local bands for this episode because I was going to, I am going to focus on the local election. Um, talking all over a woman in a typical, like a man. Um, I, but for reasons, reasons, I am going to do some, uh, play some other things that are not local, like I already played the Rocky. Um, this is Nasty Girls, uh, Women's Rights Childbirth, um, Locals Only is a new show, In the News is another new show that's coming out where basically I just, I basically I just do my recycling, where I go through, um, the paper and I read sort of things, um, this is your kind of a fake preview of that, uh, I have shot some episodes of that and I will be doing that um, last night at the Black Lodge with the Punk the Vote featuring Wimps. I am going to be playing Wimps. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not Childbirth, but Chastity Belt will be playing Chop Suey on November 17th. That's an all-ages show, and I will be playing Chastity Belt a little bit later in the program. Um, settling in. Um, I am going to cover the, I am going to talk a little bit about the, the national election. Um, I just want to say that I am not, obviously I am going to be first deal for Hillary in 2016. We endorse this channel, officially endorses for all our official endorsement counts or anything. Um, Hillary Clinton. I'm voting for Hillary Clinton, um, not just to not vote for Donald Trump, because I really believe in her, and I do want to talk a little bit about that. Um, I don't know if people remember, a lot of people may be too young, or I can just remember a version of the narrative, and this was mostly sort of comical, satirical, the Saturday Night Live version where basically Bill was this bumbling guy who liked his Big Macs um, and Hillary was running the country. Um, 
I don't believe that's true. I think Bill Clinton is a really smart, intelligent individual. Um, but I still kind of liked that narrative, and I bought into it. I think around the time of the impeachments, I can remember, you know, the first time you heard someone saying, I've already talked about this, um, they should let her run the country. And I was a kid, and I was, you know, and I was impressionable, and I thought, yeah. Um, I think as far as identity politics, if we're going to talk about that at all, um, I do want to vote for her, and I admit that, but that's not why I'm voting for her. I think when Geraldine Ferraro was the vice presidential candidate in 1984, that just seemed, that seemed normal to me. That was like, oh, this is the new normal, and we'll see a woman vice president, and soon a woman president, and Martha Thatcher in the UK, and, but it took a really long time. Um, I think if Hillary doesn't win the presidency, it could take a long time again, but I also think if she wins the presidency and she doesn't do a good job, it could take a long time. That could set wi wi women's rights back, too. So again, I don't think that's the reason to vote for her. I don't think she, I think she will do a good job, and that's why I'm voting for her. I think she has the experience, I think she has the dedication and the drive, I think she has the tenacity, I think she has the ability to play to both sides of the aisle. Um, in this, in, in our very divisive climate in this country, and I think internationally, she has the experience and she has the diplomacy um, to do the job. The, her opponent, I think it's difficult even to separate unfitness for the presidency from just a malignant human being. Um, never a fan of his. Personally, he always seemed like a blowhard. His self-aggrandizement, his obsession with gold, and, and just really tacky, tacky, uh, tacky, uh, ostentatious present presentations of wealth, and it all felt like new money in a really gauche sort of way, and I realize as I sit here as a punk rock anarchist with tattoos and not... But that, you know, that's that's what he felt like to me. Even that's that's as a kid. That's what he felt like to me as a child. Um, wasn't impressed. Um, I think the Republican Party really needs to analyze its fixation with celebrity candidates and celebrities from. Uh, oh man, why did I put it at the bottom? Of the I do have some VHS. We might be playing on the channel, but from you know. Republican Party needs to analyze its fixation with um, celebrities, whether it's the governor, um, um, Clint Eastwood, etc., etc. Um, we are listening to Reagan News, which is the song Reagan News by the band Reagan News off of the album Reagan News. Um, I think it, it really paints a picture of um, a sort of a circus, kangaroo, does not taking it all seriously. I think that's part of the whole failure. Um, that being said, 
I do kind of have personally with Trump. I did grow up in New York. I grew up with all that. Spy Magazine. Um, the Apprentice, the final episode of season one, the finale of The Apprentice, was February 4th, 2000. I'm sorry, February 12th, 2004. I'm 100% certain of that because it was my daughter's, it was the day my daughter was born. I still watched it. Um, I kind of was obsessed with that show at the time. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, on the big screen, watching Tanner 88. Uh, this is shot in the Lanes, which is a restaurant in New York. Um, Steve Buscemi is playing, I guess, himself. Uh, Cynthia Nixon from Sesame City plays the daughter. Uh, I'm not getting to the local politics yet. I may play some Nintendo if this show runs long enough. who feel that the national election I have, I also, in addition to Rocky and Rocky, which I played at the top of the show, and Rocky II by Bill Conti, I also have over the top, for those who remember this movie, uh, who feel, for those who feel the coverage, a lot of people were saying, you know, this was CNN coverage, Fox News, they're covering it literally like a, you know, boxing match or something, the way they had the candidates' faces and the music and the drama, um, Here's sort of <laughs> this movie, for those who don't remember it, um, dramatized uh, arm wrestling. Um, Sylvester Stallone arm wrestling movie. Over the top, Dad! Over the top! Um, um, yeah, that was a thing. For those of us who didn't have anything else to watch in the 80s, I did actually have seen that movie more than once. Uh, this song. Continuing on with semi locals theme. Um, closer. Um, this is the cute lepers when the news is always the same. Let's take a look at some headlines. Um, Protecting housekeepers focus on Seattle initiative 1.4. Um, uh, oh, I should have started with here. Clinton makes formal nomination, um, and I, we all know she's going to make history again. Um, in local news, I guess we're, we're leaning into it now. Um, Governor Inslee, Bill Bryant. Governor Inslee, I am. You know, this is definitely like a hold your nose, begrudgingly um, endorsing Bill Bryant, Governor Inslee. I don't know how much an enormous difference it makes. I think, as the Times has pointed out, the race has much been about either attacking or defending Inslee's term. Um, I don't think he's been a great governor. I think he'll do better than Bill Bryant, but neither of them, for instance, have a particular answer to how they're going to fund um, a particular answer to how they're going to fund uh, education. The McFerry decision, um, they don't, they're both fuzzy on that. And Jay Inslee, and this is the big reason I'm almost like, am I, can I endorse him? Am I not going to vote for him? Um, I, I'm not going to vote for Bill Bryant, but the reason I would even consider that um, because he says he's going to, you know, declare how he's going to fund that in December, um, after he's elected, should he be elected. I, you know, I really think that's something he could put out there now if he wants us to, he's going to say, hey, I've got the answers for the next four years. Well, where are the answers? Um, but Bill Bryant doesn't either. On, um, oil trains, neither of those is particularly firm, neither of them saying, get the, the fuck out of our, um, and call trains with them. We're done. That we don't. We can be done with this. This is Mosh Eminem. Um, uh, I 
speak on homelessness, though, Bill Bryant has a hardline approach, zero tolerance, that I'm really, I definitely, that was sort of what I drew the line with that. Um, uh, I think parking find a place in sound transit boat. That's the other thing. Um, I think that uh, you know, I think a big one in Washington State is the sound transit vote. Um, I am voting yes on it. I understand. I'm here in Seattle. I understand the argument. It's good. A lot of money. It's going to benefit mostly Seattle. But I think that infrastructure, the connections. Seattle is the hub. But I think those connections and that transportation is going to help everyone. If you think, well, I drive every day. That's not going to affect me. Think about whether you want your community to grow. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want to keep it a small enclave. And then you vote your conscience. Um, but if you want a strong community where you are, then you want people, you probably don't want everyone to have cars. You want other people to be able to come into and out of your community. Um, and transportation, mass transportation, is the way to do that. Um, is going to entail car tabs, house taxes, um, sales tax, and it's, you know, it's a 25-year, multi-billion dollar initiative, I understand that, that's big. Um, so again, it's with some seriousness, it's with some thought, but I am going to be voting yes on the Stag Transit Initiative. Um, we were talking about Reagan, or at least listen to Reagan you. Republicans have all but given up on winning over urban voters. Um, I am an urban voter. Uh, I understand that Washington is a big place, and we hope we all kind of vote our conscience and... Um, the skip voting, I'm sorry, skip voting mailer will tell you, and I think those kinds of weird, creepy things in the mail that come, and I have um, some examples that you probably can't see from where you are anyway, so... Um, Those kinds of things that come in the mail that like I that know who you are, what your voting record is. This one, dear U.S. taxpayer, you are here by requested to answer the enclosing questionnaire concerning proposed making significant changes to current U.S. fiscal policies. Questionnaire number 14, U.S. reason number 73. This is all bullshit. This is not an official thing, but they make you know they make it look official. Uh, so in the last episode, of the Halloween episode, it did take so long to upload that it came out like much long, much longer, long after Halloween. Um, I did. I read from, and I do want to do some reading from Spooky Washington. Uh, do some more reading on this program in general. I may do a show just devoted to that. Try not to speak so fast. In fact, try to slow down right now. Um, and I'm gonna get up for a moment. Uh, so I do still have this slowly rotting pumpkin that reads fuck from the last episode that I am keeping around because I do think it uh, it fits the mood the national mood we are listening to Eminem of Encore, this is Mosh. So Bright Futures, which I think we are all going to have soon, but for those who may feel differently about Hillary, they might, this song is for them. Um, but in better news, the Cubbies did it. Cubs win the World Series. Um, there are those who are saying... Bill Murray is responsible for that. Um, here is quickly your sports coverage from A to Z. That would be Anthony Rizzo, um, who is crediting. Uh, he is uh, first baseman, um, crediting 
a five-hour energy drink given to him by Bill Murray and the Superstition were drinking five-hour energy drinks with winning the World Series. Um, ben Zobris, MVP, um, first MVP to win with the Cubbies uh, in the World Series because the MVP was established in 1955, did not exist the last time they were in the World Series. This is interesting local news. Uh, I probably should have led with it because it's like the national news and it's, it's, it's making me. Um, Robert Santico, a state Democratic elector, says that if Clinton wins Washington State, he will not cast his uh, ballot for Hillary Clinton. Uh, this also happened in North Carolina where someone is saying they could not vote for Trump. They were replaced within hours. People are saying that's going to happen here. I'm not sure. Probably by the time you're watching this, that's already happened. But that was something interesting that happened was that... Um, so this is... Uh, sorry. He will not cast his electoral college vote uh, uh, even if she wins the state. So, we'll see what happens with that. The other headline, tech workers normally not big voters. This election may change that. And a lot of people, I mean, we have remarkably low turnout for how much we, even in presidential elections, practically only 50%. And that's, I mean, we talk about how democracy is the root of who we are and what we do. And, you know, we wave flags and that's so important to us, but, um, you know, this is it. This is the opportunity to do it. This is the... Um, this is the opportunity to reflect that, to take advantage of that. Futures with Hush Hush. Coming up, this is No Society by Bristle. Um, you know, coming from my roots, my I think my anti-authoritarian, egalitarian, believing in equality, I think all those things are still in there, but I do... I don't, I guess I don't necessarily believe smashing the state is the only or best uh, option. Uh, so, you know, I do think voting is. This episode is brought to you by Disney. No, not really. This DVD player is a Disney TV player. So, of course, it puts a, DVD, a Disney logo on the screen the moment you, um, you pop out the DVD. Um, so, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this, but I am actually going to throw on the
definitely time to go home. Is it dark yet? Yeah, I'm going to see the work this way. Let's see the tail. Love you, Chassie Bell. Begin building here. happens. It is actually, it is actually Sunday morning, um, and we are, we are shooting just a little bit, not an episode, but just a little bit anticipation of the final count. Whoa! <laughs> um, Alright, that made it exciting. Shot our celebration promo, but we are. Do you want to stir? No, if I stir, it'll get everywhere. Okay. Um, but it is actually anticipation of the election. We have two days to go. If uh, if you have not voted yet, definitely vote. Right? Can Do you? it, or we're all gonna die. Thank you. Yes, that is not an exaggeration. Like actually, not voting right now is like an act of treason. Yes. Um, oh, Nikita, I have some bad news for you. I ate all of your Halloween food. <laughs> How can you possibly prove it? I just ate Halloween food. I was in there eating the candy. Uh, I see. That is, a, that is a technicality. How do you know I didn't eat it just now? <laughs> um, because you can't eat. Ten pieces of candy that quickly. Mm -hmm. That is probably true. Uh, okay, I'm gonna place. Were you prompting uh, me to say something that I didn't say? Oh. No, oh no, no. There's no, no. There's no prompts. There are no rules. I'm gonna play some Flowbot. Um, did you see the president? We we watched the Obama out mic drop. Did you see the presidential meet tweets mic drop? Uh, no. Uh, 
Obama just sent a, a tweet. I guess Donald Trump sent a tweet saying that Obama will go down as the worst president in history. Whoa! Right. How do you even say that? Okay. And Obama went on uh, Jimmy Kimmel, as he does, with the mean tweets, to say, well, at least I will go down as a president in history. And then he just drops the phone. It was, it was pretty good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I, uh, I think I heard about that. What is going on with her? I think that was stinky legs. Um... Whoa. I did want, okay, so a, okay, a high school, I'm sorry, not a high school, an elementary school in New York, in Yorktown Heights, New York, um, which has predicted every presidential election correctly since 1968, has predicted Hillary Clinton will be the winner of the election. However, there's a guy who has correctly predicted every election since 1984. I call him the keys guy. He has this complicated formula. Um, he is predicting Trump. Um, and then a... And then a... Computer model that has been correct in the last, I think, three elections that it is used, has been used, has predicted Trump. However, here's the interesting thing about the computer model. It doesn't predict, what it doesn't take into account is the positivity or the negativity of how much people are talking about that person on the internet. All it does is analyze how much people are being talked about. And that's how it decides which candidates are going to win. So, it's possible people are talking about Trump more, but not positive. Does that make sense? So, we'll see. Um, now it's kind of down to elementary kids versus some guy with a formula versus a computer. Um, one interesting presidential uh, endorsement that Hillary Clinton picked up was the Libertarian vice presidential candidate. He's actually running for vice president with Gary Johnson, who's running for the Libertarian candidate. Their vice presidential candidate has endorsed Hillary Clinton. He's basically said, we don't have a chance, and we'd love for you to vote for us, but if you're going to vote... <laughs> Don't vote for that other guy. <laughs> um, Donald Trump, as you, uh, of course, has been endorsed by the Ku Klux Klan. The Crusader is the paper of the Ku Klux Klan. That was kind of... Um, Yikes. Um, that was kind of, yeah. I did have the weirdest deja vu moment. I don't know why. That exact moment. Um, I was going to talk about the gross domestic product. That sort of... Do you know what the gross domestic product is? No. The measure of how um, how our economy is doing, basically how much we're producing, how much goods, how much how our economy is doing. It's up. It had been around one percent, but the most recent came out said it was at two point nine percent. That's good for the Democrats because the incumbent party, which is the people who are already in power, the economy is not doing well. What do you, how do you think people vote? For them or against them? Okay. But if the economy is doing well... So, this report that the gross domestic product is good. The report, did you hear that there were going to be rate hikes in the Obamacare? That that was going up? Yeah, that report came out in September. That wasn't so good. It's been a it's been a tough month for the last couple of months for the Clinton campaign. But I mean, it's down to the wire. It's, it's much tighter than it was. I mean, in the polls, she was like ahead 12 points, and now she's ahead maybe two points. Some polls were even putting him even or ahead. But I think she's gonna win. Uh, we're 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 worried, but we're not gonna win. Okay, so that was the update. Um, I had said that there were some counties in Washington that the ballot was required extra postage because it's so long. The, I actually filled out the whole ballot like, um, on camera. Um, it's a long ballot with a lot of referendums and issues. Um, Sonomish, Whatcom, and Douglas County, if you are voting there, you probably should put an extra stamp on it, but what uh, what they don't tell you is that the post office is going to deliver your ballot to Douglas. Uh, it's their, their duty. They have committed to delivering all postal ballots regardless of whether they have stamps on them or not. Um, so you probably should, but you don't have to. Um, 
Cubs winning the World Series. Have you have you heard anything about that? Have your friends been talking about that? Not really that much. Not that exciting. Um, first time in 108 years. They won the 1908 World Series, 1907 World Series. Um, now again, they have won the 19... 1916, the 2016, 108 years later, um, they did, there is a 108-year-old woman who, is that right? She's 108. This is her second Cubs World Series win that she's lived through. They found someone who is excited about that. Um, so I printed out the lyrics to Kiara's Gold. Good up in my, good up in my day. Uh, what do we believe it is? Caught up in my tea. Caught up in my tea. Up in my tea. How it sounds to me and how I'm, I'm, I'm still pretty sure is how it sounds to me. Um, it is gold up in my tea. Gold up in my, gold up in my tea. It doesn't gold even... up in my tea. Gold up in my tea. Don't care what you say to me. I'm going to bite your feelings out. Gold up in my tea. Okay, what? I miss you in my basement. Gold up in my tea, but your brother was a good substitute for you. Gold up in my tea. Uh, <laughs> that would be. That makes nuts. no sense. Uh, like I that's mean, practically gibberish. Uh huh. Gold up in my, gold up in my tea. Um, the lyrics to Rihanna's Rihanna, not Rihanna. Excuse me. Rihanna's work. Work, 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 work. Um. Uh, they have like 11 songwriters on that song. Like it took a lot of people and really like dur 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 dur, those are the lyrics. Those are the printed lyrics that they copyrighted. Um, and it took a lot of people to put that song together. It is, it is quite catchy though. Uh, this is gonna be it because we out. Uh, again, just a big reminder of both. Not be appropriate to just for fun of these. Any other news? Anything else you want to share or report? Um, I was just going to say, the five, okay, so do you remember when we went to the Seahawks thing after they won the Super Bowl? That was pretty big. Um, the gathering in Chicago after the Cubs was estimated to be around 5 million people, which makes it the seventh largest gathering in human history. Um, what? Other large gatherings in human history, a pilgrimage in India in 2013 had 30 million people, a festival in Iraq had 17 million people in 2014, a funeral in India in 1969 had 15 million people, another funeral of the Ayatollah Khomeini in Iran in 1989, 10 million people, um, the Pope visiting the Philippines in 2015, 6 million people, World Youth Day in 1995, 5 million people, and I guess the Chicago Cubs tied that at 5 million people. Um, Beyonce at the Country Music Awards, you heard about that. Beyonce performed with the Dixie Chicks at the Country Music Awards. Kind of big crossover event for country and, and other types of music. Then some people tried to turn it into conspiracy theories, saying that the Country Music Awards were censoring Beyonce or removing them from their tweets. And what they said was they posted a promo, and then they removed the promo, and then they put up the full clip. And that's all they did was put up the full clip. And people, they're removing Beyonce tweets because they're racist, like trying to turn it into some, you know, I don't know. Whatever. So that was that. We did the Kira lyrics. Um, oh, also in sports news, Las Vegas Raiders, the Oakland Raiders, a team very strongly associated with Oakland uh, in California, may be moving to Las Vegas. Um, I don't know what that means. Um, and then in other entertainment news, Snoop Dogg, rapper Snoop Dogg, and Martha Stewart, the uh, like home fix up lady, have a new cook sh cooking show coming out on the YouTube. Oh, yeah, I saw a thing. Uh, didn't. Like, 
Okay. Um, did you want to talk about the Amazon Fresh stores that you read or heard about? Oh. Um, and what what service do they offer to the regular grocery delivery? I'm sorry, the grocery stores not offer. Oh, they like have your ingredients or not ingredients. They sure. have your uh, uh, groceries, groceries and they just put them out. Sorry, or they give them to you. They have curbside service. Yeah. That sounds neat. Okay. Um, do you want to pick? Should we? Should we? As our tail out song, should we do Fall Out Boy, Green Day? Uh, Green Day. Green Day. Oh. Um, also in celebrity entertainment news, will you please hold this for a moment? Um, I can't see the have you heard this rumor? Do you know why I'm holding up these records? Why? What's the rumor? That Drake and Taylor Swift are dating. Oh, whoa. Um, they went to a party together, and then a ru like rumor started. And then Drake tweeted a picture of them together at the party. And then rumors started, the rumors specifically being that Rihanna was mad and insisted he take that picture down. There's no proof that she said that. There's no proof a picture of him and Taylor Swift together at a party means they're dating. It just means that he knows Taylor Swift. Maybe he's, you know, hinting at a collabo, but I, I don't, I do not, I am not announcing this rumor. I'm just saying it's a rumor that's out there. Uh, <laughs> all right, we said, you said Green Day, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, no, I started that rumor. What'd you say? The Taylor Swift. Uh. That's kind of, yeah, that's kind of silly. You know, who started uh, it? But. Oh, I don't know. Uh, the internet. What are we going to play? Uh, Welcome to Paradise. Christy Brady Oh, yeah, Christy Brady Bender. What, 2,000 Light Years Away? Mm -hmm. President Obama guest edited Wired magazine. Really? Yeah. Um, do you think that's what he would do after he left the office? Because he mentions in the like intro to the editorial, and he's like, you know, so I am busy and it is an election season, but I thought I'd take a little time to edit Wired magazine. Because why not? Uh, all right. So let's just do some more like. Okay, wait, wait, no, I'm sorry. Okay, first we'll do our goodbye. Thank you for watching. Bye. And bye. And I almost said happy Halloween because I'm still so we've been doing that for a week. Okay, not happy Halloween. Happy. Unhappy Halloween. Unhappy Halloween. Sunday, November 6, 2016, the FBI James Director, <laughs> FBI Director James Tony has issued a letter stating that after investigations, the emails, um, into the emails on Andrew Weiner's laptop, they do not warrant any additional charges against Hillary Clinton, um, which is bizarre after first issuing it, uh, a statement that they were looking into them, to then issue a statement, you know, nothing really there, um, which more or less was as expected, but all of this coming so close, I think in the end, um, my takeaway is that it's done more to damage the credibility of the FBI, I think, than uh, 
Denise Clinton, uh, Secretary Clinton, Madam Secretary, Madam Zarbillo. Um, with that in mind, I am going to do some... <laughs> I can see the future, and in the future, she's the president, All right, I am going to shoot another, <laughs> sorry, ignore me, Alright, this is it. This is like the bottom of the night. Um, you know, base is loaded, whatever corny sports metaphors you want to do, but this is it. Said it before, say it again. Vote, vote, vote. Vote, please, now. So I already reported on the, I guess, breaking top story, and this is really just, I just want to do a little bit, a few. Um, just wrap up kind of things. Um, breaking story, James Comey, of, director of the FBI, um, issued a statement today saying that after investigation, further investigation, the emails that he had previously stated were that they were reopening a case against Hillary Clinton or, um, why am I rapping? I've already talked about this twice. Okay. Anyway, uh, the breaking news, which I've already uploaded, is that uh, he's issued a statement saying, in fact, the FBI has found nothing, and that, in fact, um, you know, why did they say anything, and um, the Clinton camp has already responded, um, basically saying, we're glad to have that, um, the emails in question were found on Andrew Wiener's um, laptop, I guess a laptop he's used primarily with his four-year-old son, or son, um, Andrew Wiener being the estranged ex-husband of Prima Abed Abedin, the Clinton aide who has sort of laid low since that, but I, I don't know, I, I'm a fan, so I, I wish her well, I hope she stays strong, and I hope she does get to enjoy this, what it will be a victory for her as much as um, anyone else in the Clinton campaign who's worked long and hard to get them where they are. Um, Hillary Clinton uh, today is traveling to Pittsburgh to, I guess, an appearance with LeBron James tomorrow. We'll be appearing with Beyonce, which, you know, tough life. Uh, but I guess, you know, you pull out all the stops, it's good for her, and yes, um, those are the supporters. J-Lo, uh, she's already appeared recently with and Mark Anthony, who, is it me, or are they, you know, they're one of those couples that are, you see them together more often now than when they were together, but it goes a little, you know, you want to say, is that really for the kids, but yeah, good for them, whatever, um, but yeah, uh, both appeared on stage with, uh, Hillary, Miss Madam Secretary. <laughs> Again, again, again in sports news, should I just do a sports show? Um, I'm really not. <laughs> really, anyone who knows me knows I am not that. that but, uh, again, 
again with the national anthem. Uh, Who's gonna sing the national anthem in the puppy bowl? Um, Seven Streeter uh, before, attempted to perform the national anthem in a We Matter t-shirt at a Philadelphia 76ers game. She was not allowed to. She will be performing December 6th, the 76ers versus the LA Lakers. Um, apparently will be wearing her We Matter t-shirt. The uh, 76ers, after consideration, did apologize. Denisha Lawrence on October 22nd, 2016, knelt while singing the national anthem, which I think is a, um, a unique choice. I don't know. I, I, I have not actually seen the clips of that. I just read about that, but that sounds that sounds interesting. Um, and good for her. Good for people taking a stand. Um, recent survey. Um, Eight out of ten people said this election cycle has left them feeling repulsed. That's, um, which, which is understandable. Um, play that much Kick it old school. Stay true to my roots. I am saying vote, but you know, <laughs> there are alternate perspectives in this world. If you're voting for Gary Johnson, you know, good luck to you. <laughs> um, too many of you vote for Gary Johnson. Not just all. Sorry, I don't have a flyer promo for him. Uh, the promo is very nice. It's quite large. Um, but I felt like after stating, you know, I felt I had actually seen these candidates speak, so I could speak knowledgeably. I then was just kind of very vague and said, well, I had a feeling that she was, he was. So I want to be more specific, and I want to talk about what appealed to me about him or what um, they, like I said, both seemed young. They both seemed big on big ideas, big on um, enthusiasm, which is good. Um, they both spoke knowledgeably, I think. Um, so, Miss Jones spoke a lot about her upbringing in another country, which is fine. She compared systems she'd seen here, the systems she saw there. Um, which I guess she felt were far superior. Um, and it's not that I think our systems are so great or took it personally or took it... I think it's just kind of like... You know how 
you ever work a job and someone's just always talking about their old job and you're like, okay, so we're going to do this. And they're like, you know, in my old job, we did it like this. And you're like, even if their ideas are good or even if you just kind of start to feel like, well, why are you not at your old job? Um, her ideas also, she talked specifically about her children's school. She just seemed very, I don't know. And this is, it, she talked a lot about herself, I guess. Um, in Mr. Reichdahl's words, I heard what sounded more, not so much what he thought of his, his own great ideas, but his willingness to work with other people, his willingness to draw out ideas, um, I think. And so the, I think that's, you know, um, and not so much this versus that, but, you know, how can we solve these problems? And that's, you know, problem solver, I think, is that what we're looking for a long time so. So, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that a little bit. Um, Jazzy's magazine, is that how you pronounce it? I'm assuming typically a political swing votes has a, you know, they're, even they are, they're in on the game. Vote, vote, vote. Um, Sarah Silverman, is this a... a they sip and stroll. Um, Sarah Silverman, I think of, she's, she's uh, a Hillary supporter. She's fond of a word that has become popular in this election cycle, so I guess I just thought of her. Um, a bit, and you know, yeah, your weak spot. You just can't really let it. Oh, there you go. 
Oh, no, 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 make more sense to show the album covers that of the, uh, I've already done that. Okay. Here are records I could have played in this episode, but didn't. Maybe I'll play them next time. Um, like I said, I am doing a locals only show. Um, no doubt we'll feature Chastity Belt who are playing November 17th at Chop Suey. That's an all ages show. Um, I am doing a drive time show that is coming up and an in the news show. Thanks for voting, thanks for... 